Julia and Lee, we appreciate it. I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot more jokes for the rest of the campaign here. Oh, they just keep coming. What? Can I, can I just ask a question? Sure. What, what is Fox News? It's just a parade of propaganda, isn't it? It's just a, it's just a festival of ignorance. What? Why, a million Fox people are dead in Iraq. Come on, this is ridiculous. What's the point of this? Um, this is insane. Well, I love, uh, go I out, love people Fox at home. News. Go outside. Go, go hug Lee, your children. you should be more. Well, Fox you News should be more worried. worried. Love your family. You know, and you, you get all the news. Right. Fox, you get all the news you can at Fox News. All right, thanks. And guys. I think, oh, okay. All right, that's it. Jerry, would you categorize yourself as being on the far left, as in that quote, that you have not come to understand the benefits of President Obama <laughs> thus far? I'm probably more liberal than uh, uh, the president. Uh, but when I read that article, uh, I'd have to say it's a very good article. Um, when he's saying that the critics are dumb, I mean, obviously that's a headline to grab your attention. Yeah. But it's not really that the people are dumb. It's to say that they're missing a point of how he's been successful in a very difficult in time. What? Well, I think he's been incredible. He saved our financial system when, when it was just about to go under. People had lost almost half of their life savings and pension funds and things like that. So clearly that. He saved the auto industry. He got Osama bin Laden. The economy is now growing. We have added in the private sector 2.6 million jobs in the last two years. I mean, the fact of the matter is he's doing very well. And it is a little disingenuous for here we are at Fox complaining that, gee, Newsweek may be a little partisan. <laughs> well, I'm sure there are a lot of people that don't like what President Obama is doing. But I'll, I'll say it once again. If the point of this discussion is to be upset with a magazine that even if it took the position that they're pro-Obama, again, Everybody in the media is doing things like that. We're here on Fox News. Every single day, in fairness, you guys, every single you day, know, bash President I'm, Obama. I'm going to take every you to task day. on that. I'm going to take you to task on that because on this panel right yeah, here, exactly. we have a fair and balanced panel right here. Exactly. This and panel, I'm the independent. What's the rest of the show? The rest of the show, every single morning, you guys are, 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 are slamming Obama. You know you are. That, and I'm not saying you don't have a right to. But every single conversation is something bad about Obama. Well, be that as it may, the, I, th I think the point is is that someone who says, the, well, well, the president's critics are dumb, um, are, they're, they're have, that's their opinion. I think to, you know, to talk about uh, a bad foreign policy or the mood of the country, that's an opinion. And I think Sullivan and Newsweek took the perspective that the, the mood of the country ought to be, look at what he did with the financial crisis, look at what he did with the auto industry, look at where the country was. And that's his opinion. I, I think totally fair game and good points. And by the way, Jerry, you yeah. obviously don't watch our show <laughs> because you do not understand that there's a reason, I'll speak for myself, I sit in the middle as the independent on the panel, and quite frankly, we present both sides of the story and we le leave it up to our viewers to decide where they feel. That's not true. Let's talk about the statistics. Let's talk about the data. In 1978, uh, the, the, uh, the recent number of marijuana smokers uh, in the 12th grade. It was 37% of the 12th graders said that they smoked marijuana recently. Today, that number is down to 22%. Not and the it, number I just gave. Well, your number that's is seen, wrong. That's seen, no, wrong. your number is wrong. Take it up with the National Institutes no, of Health. All right, look, they're I, the one that, that put it I am a out. council member on the National Institutes of Health. Your number is wrong. I'm telling you, it's 22% of, of, of seniors who smoke marijuana in the past well, month. All right. That's a I, fact. To, I doubt it's the fact because no, we're no. Not, we don't get this wrong. <laughs> no, these these researchers that's but, wrong. All right. Well, 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 Muslim. So why did you write a book about the founder of Christianity? Well, to be clear, I am a scholar of religions with four degrees, including one in the New Testament and fluency in biblical Greek, who has been studying the origins of Christianity for two decades who also just happens to be a Muslim. So uh, it's not that I'm just some Muslim writing about Jesus. I am an expert with a PhD in the history of religions. Uh, but but, but I have been obsessed question, with Jesus. Though, it still begs the question, why would you be interested in the founder of Christianity? Because it's my job as an academic. I am a professor of religion, including the New Testament. Uh, that's what I do for a living, actually. So, I mean, it, it would be like asking a Christian why they would write a book about 
uh, you know, Islam. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But it, so again, I mean, I know that we've mentioned this three times now. Uh, I'm not sure what my faith happens to do with my 20 years of academic study of the New Testament. I'm just trying to bring out um, what some others are claiming at this point, and I want you to answer to those claims, which is... Well, it's pretty clear that there are those who actually do not like the book, who are, uh, you know, unhappy with its uh, general arguments. That's perfectly fine. I'm more than willing to talk about the arguments of the book itself, but I do think it's perhaps a little bit strange that rather than debating the arguments of the book, we are debating the right of the scholar to actually write it. With us now is Stephen Colbert. Bill, thank you for having me on. This is an amazing honor. I want you to know that I spend so much time in the world that is spinning all the time that to be in the no-spin zone actually gives me vertigo. Okay. Now, who who watches you? What's your audience? Do you do research? Do you know who? Well, Bill, that's one of the reasons I want to do my show. Okay. I emulate you. Yeah. And I want to bring your message of love and peace, which I understand that is your message. It is. I want to bring the message of love and peace to a younger audience, people in their 60s, people in their 50s, people who don't watch your show. Okay. So people in their 50s and 60s, too young for the factor, right, uh, are watching your show. Because we did a study of Jon Stewart's show. Yeah. That guy? And, yeah. And it was stone slackers that were watching his show. Absolutely, you have to be high to understand John Stewart. Now, how, how that guy is so he is pinker than an Indian River grape. How does Stewart handle the fact that you are now more famous and successful than he is? I don't know. We don't talk. No, no, we don't talk at all. No, does that drive him to smoke more substance? That now that you have overtaken, it might. It, yeah. it might. He was high most of the time I worked over there. I yeah. had to leave, Bill. Right. I didn't want to do my own show. I loved the Daily Show. I loved the people who worked there. And you, I had to get out from me. You emulating me were outraged by the conduct of Stewart and his minions. Were you Absolutely, because you know, here's what I love about you, Bill. Okay, you give. Okay, I am a giver. You give and give. Right. I do my show half hour. This is why I could never even hope to be you. I do my show half hour night, four nights a week. I haven't seen my kids in 18 months, and I am losing calcium in my bones. Doctors mm -hmm. say I should stop. I'm not going to. Okay? You go five nights a week, an hour an a night, hour. plus the radio factor, Bill. Right. What are you on? What gives you the strength? Jesus it, Christ it or is. Pat Robertson's protein I, shake? I, I, I'm, Could I just get a feed seen, from your show into my ear? I don't know. I, we have some kind of buzz thing. Now, look, I just want to tell the audience that mm -hmm. every left-wing critic in the country mm -hmm. loves you. There are no right-wing critics. But every left-wing critic, Bill. I don't read them. Love you. Why? Is it because you're French? Is that why? That must be it, Bill. Yeah. I'm using that to pull the wool over their eyes so they see that's the sugar that you must puts be doing my medicine something. into the system. You must be doing something. I'm doing you, Bill. That the new, they hate me. The New York Times hates me, but they love you. It's the New York Times, But what's Bill? the difference? You are hate George Bush. Me. Of course they're going to hate you. <laughs> they're haters, Bill. They are. They're scum. Um, I have a sheet here. It says you dislike and you are afraid of bears and owls. Is that true? I'm afraid of bears. I think owls are a waste of time. Okay. You don't think about owls. But no. They're in the John Stewart category. They absolutely are. Right. You yeah. won't have anything to do with owls. No. But you do fear bears. I do fear bears. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other They're thing giant, is... giant, marauding, godless killing machines. <laughs> There's one right there. Right there. Okay. That's not a real bear, right? No. Okay. Thank now you. That's, that's the editor of the New York Times. Okay. Now, your middle name is Tyrone. It is. How could that possibly happen? Because I'm Irish, Bill. Have no, you ever been? To, you ever French. been? French. Have you ever been? There is one Irish. Have you, have you ever been? Colbert. Have you ever been? Colbert. Con Colbert of the Easter Rebellion of well, 1916. Now you're Colbert again. I thought you had Who been are a you? researcher. Are you Colbert or Colbert? Bill. I'm whoever you want me to be. All right, Colbert. I'm at the foot of the master. Yeah, I don't want you Make to be a French guy. Make me a spaniel guy. at thy gate, Bill. You want to be Irish? You can be Irish. I don't want you being a French guy. You know what, people? You know what I hate about people who criticize you? Who? They, they criticize what you say, but they never give you credit for how loud you say it. That's true. Mm -hmm. There are not many or people. Or how long you say it. As loud as I am. Mm -mm. I'm giving you the last word. Is that a wise thing to do? I, I give it to me. Yeah. What is the last word? I want to thank you for not asking me about that thing that we pre-agreed you wouldn't ask me about. Okay. The kid, the thing that happened. Don't you that? Yeah, that thing. <laughs> okay. I, that's the kind of guy I am. A sensitive, kind guy. And I'll be on your program tonight, right? Watch it. 4.30 in the morning, that's when you guys are on? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that, okay. Yeah, that's Pacific time. All right. Looking forward to that. Stephen Colbert, right. everybody. Thank you, Bill. Please share this episode with your friends. Please DVR this show so you don't miss any of it. 
Um, if you just join us, we were talking about a group in the United States. We had a group here whose goal it was to eliminate 10% of the U.S. population. And when I saw this headline, I kind of laughed and I said, oh, this is so ridiculous. Yet another person claiming it's racist to have a white Santa, you know. And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white. But this person is just arguing that, that maybe we should, we should also have a black Santa. But, you know, Santa is what he is. And just so you know, we're just debating this because someone wrote about it, kids. You know, <laughs> but, uh, t okay, so, that, so I've given, her name is Aisha Harris. I've given her her, you know, her due on where she was going with it. But just because it makes you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean it has to change. You know, I mean, Jesus yeah. was a white man, too. But, you, you know, it's like we have he was a historical figure. I mean, that's a verifiable fact, as is Santa. I just want right. the kids watching to know that. Yes. But my point is, how do you just revise it, you know, in the middle of the legacy of the story and change Santa from white to black? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't. Well, my thoughts are that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman. It's a well-established uh, fundamental pillar of society. And uh, no group, uh, be they gays, be they NAMLA, uh, be they people who believe in bestiality, it, it doesn't matter what they are, they don't get to change the definition. The budget for the Defense Department's Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Office left from $5 million in fiscal 2005 to more than $23 million in fiscal 2010. Total Defense Department spending on sexual assault prevention and related efforts now exceeds $113 million annually, annually. That's from McClatchy newspaper. So you have this whole bureaucracy upon bureaucracy being built up with all kinds of levels of people to support women in the military who are now being raped too much. Well, many would say that they need to be protected, and these uh, these uh, sexual programs, abuse programs, are necessary. That's so funny. Same thing I, with thought, I thought the uh, the, uh, the mission of the army and the navy and forest services was to defend and protect us, not the people who were fighting the war. Well, you we certainly want the people fighting the war to be protected from anything that uh, could be illegal. Oh, look, I mean, that's a nice try, Eric. <laughs> This whole question of women in the military has not been aired properly, and it's the great sleeping giant. Dr. Fallop segment tonight, last night on The Factor, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman said that she believes some Americans do not feel the USA is ready for a woman president. Very provocative. Joining us on Washington, Kate Obachain, a Republican, and Kirsten Powers, a Democrat and Fox News analyst. All right. Now, I know, I know you probably thought about this very much, Kirsten. Oh, yeah. There's got to be some downside to having a woman president, right? Something, something that, that may not fit with that office, correct? Hmm, I'm gonna say no, Bill. So there's no, <laughs> there's no downside any, to having a woman what, and-, and just, just because you're female that it would something- There's gotta be a downside for a woman. Do you know one? Uh, you know, I'm having a tough time with this one too, Bill. I think that depends on the individual. Of course, there's a downside to certain individual women. Um, you know, but in just general, like a, you, you both don't see I any don't gender deficiency to lead men. the free world. Okay, but that, not that many. There haven't been that many strong women leaders uh, throughout history. I mean, we have Golda Meir, we have right. Margaret Thatcher. Both of them were uh, we very bunch, tough. You know, a bunch of people in America on the Senate level and a Congress level. Um, but, you know, when you're president of the United States, you got to deal with people like Putin, Kate. you got to deal with yeah. real ornery, the mullahs yeah. in Iran. Look, the mullahs in Iran, they think women are like subspecies. Uh, yeah, how's you know. Obama doing with that, with these tough guys? I mean, I would say he's probably having a much harder time than some really strong women would have. Obama's just been bending over backwards to be um, gracious and, and work with well, these people. He's running rather roughshod than bash, over him. Rather than bash the president, which well, is, just, which is funny and easy, let's keep it on women.